Hi everybody, this is Shane R. Monroe and welcome back to Monroe World. Today we're going to be looking at the brand newly released NVIDIA broadcast tool, of course from NVIDIA. And this is for those of you who are lucky enough to have RTX based GPUs from NVIDIA. This is a audio video manipulator tool that allows you to enhance things like this uh, video you're seeing right here, enhance your online meetings with noise reduction in real time, both incoming and outgoing, as well as some of the things that you might have paid good money for not that long ago, such as um, uh, Vcam from XSplit, which drops the background behind you. A lot of tools these days like Teams and Zoom, they're offering some sort of a, a background removal tool as part of their package. But NVIDIA is able to utilize the power of your GPU and AI to actually perform these in ways that are far better than those other products can do. And you'll have the opportunity to see how all that works. Again, of course, you do have to have an RTX-based GPU. Otherwise, if you try to install this, it simply won't work. There will be a link in the description down below where to get this software. It's totally free. And as you can see, I'm running it here right now. So let's take a look at exactly what it does. There's both a microphone input, an output, which will filter audio through a particular audio device and of course the camera that you saw earlier. Hello. So let's start with the microphone. Now it's very common for you to be on a meeting, you're at home, the kids are at home at school, there's a lot of noise going on in the background, or maybe you're just trying to get some work done while you're sitting through a yet another boring meeting that you just can't figure out why you're in that meeting. So you could be in a meeting and, you know, doing this nonsense the whole time, right? Um, right. I mean, it's, it's not unusual to be typing an email or something. And usually you're muted, but sometimes you forget to mute. And then your coworkers are hearing you click, 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 click. Or even, I mean, even if they can hear your mouse. I mean, you can hear my mouse is being picked up perfectly through my headset. So it'd be really cool if you could have a tool that would filter out some of the background noise that you might be presenting to other people. Likewise, since those other people don't have a cool RTX GPU, you might be interested in having repetitive noise coming from somebody else also uh, reduced so you don't have to hear that noise. And then finally, of course, the camera itself is where some of the real fun stuff happens, and we'll look at that too. So let's start off with the microphone. Um, you can set your audio source, so it doesn't have to be a quote, quote, microphone, but it does need to be some sort of an input device. And you can choose what you want to be filtered out. So um, I actually had the filtering turned on, so you may not have heard me banging on the keyboard a second ago. But now that the noise removal is gone, listen carefully. I doesn't like the fact that I'm not. Let me type in a. Let me type in a box or something. Let me open up a, a notepad. Okay, that's not. That's just me slamming on keys. Let me actually type something. Hi, this is Shane R. Monroe. All right, so you can hear that pretty clearly, right? All right, so let's do a test here. They give you a little option to record and then play back with the noise going on, right? So let's see what that sounds like. Hey, Bob, um, you know, I was talking to the boss the other day and... Uh, Hey, are you still there? Yeah, sorry, man. I'm doing this email. Now we'll play it back. Hey, Bob. Um, you know, I was talking to the boss the other day, and... Uh... Hey, are you still there? Yeah, sorry, man. I'm doing this email. Okay, so... <laughs> I don't know how many meetings you've been on that sound just like that, but I've had... Um more than my share. So let's go ahead and turn on 
that um, noise remover and uh, we'll do that again and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to turn on the noise remover and I'm going to record again. All right, let's try this again. Hey, Bob, um, you know, listen, I was uh, working on that email that you were wanting me to do and I was um, talking to the boss about it. And, you know, I don't know. Sorry, sorry, I, just gonna, I need to finish my thought. Hang on. Right, okay. So now let's see uh, let's see if that helped at all. Hey Bob, um, you know, listen, I was uh, working on that email that you were wanting me to do, and I was um, talking to the boss about it. And you know, I don't know. Sorry, sorry, I just gonna, I need to finish my thought. Hang on. Right, okay. Wow, <laughs> that actually worked unbelievably well. I mean, I expected to hear a little something in the background, but wow, right? I mean, that's um, that's pretty cool. So what other little goodies do they offer us in here? Oh, just noise removal. And you can adjust the strength, I guess. That's, that's pretty cool. And so I'm assuming um, with the speakers, it's the exact same thing, right? I, actually, I know it is. I don't have to assume because I already demoed this thing for myself but so let's take a look they give you a whole bunch of samples so now this is if some guy is on the other end and they're the ones that are um they're the ones that are making the typing right so let's see what this sounds like uh... hi there this is a test message with air conditioning in the background Normally, it'd be difficult to carry a conversation with someone as a result of this background noise. But with NVIDIA's AI-powered noise removal, distracting sounds can... All right, so you get the idea. Let's turn on the noise removal, and we'll play back again. Hi there. This is a test message with air conditioning in the background. Normally, it'd be difficult to carry a conversation with someone as a result of this background noise. But with NVIDIA's AI-powered noise removal, distracting sounds can be removed so you... Wow. How about that? I mean, that's like totally legit. All right, so I'm going to um, disable that audio, uh, the audio capture there. Hopefully I didn't get any doubling up. I guess we'll find out. And I apologize if that's the case. But anyway, so that's, um, that's real-time AI sound processing to try to get rid of annoying things in the background. Now, I don't know how well it blocks out kids in the background other than repetitive sounds, but who knows? But the camera is the real thing that was exciting to me because I am not a big league YouTuber. I'm not a huge Twitch streamer or anything like that. So I don't have a giant green screen behind me and four points of perfect lighting. So for me to do some form of background removal, even if I'm on a meeting or something and my kid's going back and forth behind me to his room, then I'd, <clears throat> I'd rather ha not have that in there. So we buy tools, right? We buy Chromacast or we, brought, we buy uh, XSplit. I mean, there's a handful of these software green screens, but not, I mean, and they do some piece of the work, but I wear black headphones and it's usually dark behind me. So if you've seen some of my other videos, when I'm in a little corner down at the bottom of the screen there, um, you'll see that my headphones are constantly flickering in and out of existence and it makes my head look like it's getting bigger and bigger and whatever. So, so yeah, so you're paying like 30, 40, $50 for these tools and they're, they may or may not be doing the job. So with broadcast, they do this, this is free, at least for now. Um, they do this by specifying a camera source and picking a, you know, compatible resolution and then you choose an effect that you would like to perform. So we have a handful of things here, one of which is background blur. This should None of these should be any surprise to you what they are, but let's take a look at the effectiveness of it. So if you look right there, you can see a little sign on my son's room, and you can kind of make out some of the cool Commodore 64 folio art that I have in the background. But if I were to turn on the, mo the background blur, um, you can see that it's somewhat effective in, um, in doing that, getting rid of some of that, that you can't quite make it out anymore. 
it's okay. I mean, I'd like it gone completely versus the blur. But, you know, if um, you're trying to maintain a presence where, yes, yeah, see, boss, I'm actually at home. I'm not on the beach or by the pool. I'm actually in my home. Maybe you just want to blur it. Uh, the next thing on the list is, let's turn that off. Oh, helps if I'm looking at the right screen, huh? The uh, Let's turn that off. So the next item is background replacement, right? So you can replace your background with something else. So I have got uh, the Overlook Hotel, <laughs> big Shining fan, that I can turn that on and now I'm at the Overlook Hotel, sort of. You can kind of see, as I move out of the way, you can see the uh, amazing patterns on the floor and the whole bit. Now, if I were using Chroma Cam or I was using XSplit, my headphones would be wigging out right now. They'd be like flickering in and out. Just go look at any of my old videos if you don't believe me. That's exactly what you would see. So this works out pretty well. And you would imagine if you could replace a background that you should be able to drop it just as well, right? So we'll change to background removal. Voila, I am gone. <laughs> I mean, I'm here, but the background's gone and my headphones are still here and there's nothing disappearing. My fingers aren't randomly vanishing, which is, I'm, that's like amazing to me, right? I mean, um, the other thing, the other great test of this is the Ah, see, now you can actually start to see where the algorithm starts to break down a little bit. When you start holding up something, it's not quite sure. But in the uh, in the other ones, uh, it would completely make this disappear. I mean, the cup would, like, vanish from my hand. There you go. Um, so you can see something translucent, but, but this is still better than what the other products were doing. I mean, it's better than me just... Looking like, I uh, kind of look like I'm holding nothing. But again, if you were to put some light, some better light into the room, which I probably should have had on from the beginning, but um, now you can start seeing some flickering going on, right? So it's definitely not perfect as it's struggling to sort of deal with what it's seeing. Sometimes less light is better than more light. And sometimes it depends on where the light is. Um, in terms of how effective it might be. But, uh, you know, the closer you get, there's a little better. My shoulders start to disappear a little bit. But oddly enough, if you turn that light back off, I tend to get a better overall um, uh, functionality that way. But let's check our glass if I turn the light on and there's more substance given to the cup. It's a little better. I mean, uh, it's still considered translucent, I suppose. But if I were to hold up, say, an Xbox controller, this is black and it disappears too. So definitely not perfect. But oddly enough, the way that broadcast handles this isn't quite as... It's not quite as sharp and distinctive like... I don't see a lot of flickering. It just sort of vanishes. It disappears. In other tools that you might see, this thing would just be going flick, 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 flick. I mean, it would be flickering in and out like it was the Philadelphia experiment or something. I'm trying to think of anything else. Of course, anything with uh, some sort of a disparate color should work okay. And again, once it leaves focus of you, it starts to seemingly put it as a background. Let me see if I get closer. Uh, okay, not great though, uh, and that's white. So what about something that's like um, so what about something that's like blue, something that's got a real color? Yeah, so it understands humans, but not necessarily what humans hold. Still very cool though, and it's um, it's definitely some of the better of the. Definitely better than most of the other 4Pay software, and you get this for free. And, of course, it does say that it's in beta, so this could improve over time. Is there some other setting in here I needed to worry about? Oh, auto frame. So this is kind of fun. Um, yeah, so instead of dropping the background, it tries to keep you centered on me. 
And so there's times when you might be reaching over for something, reaching over here, you're reaching up this way, right? So this attempts to keep the camera focused on you. And again, there's other software that does it. Um, it may just not do it quite as well, or it may cost money to do that. So, and again, if you see, I'm not, um, let me see here. So obviously, I wonder what happened if I turned on that blur effect really strong. So yeah, you see it's, um, it's processing outside of the human. So it doesn't understand this. It understands this, but it has no clue. It thinks this is part of the background. It'd be interesting to get a human to stand behind me and see what it might do as a result of that. But anyway, so, I mean, there's not a ton more to show. You can launch it with Windows. Um, there's, there's not a whole lot of other options. This, um, this sits quietly in your sys tray. And some of you may be, of course, wondering from a task management point of view, what this is taking up. And let's see, I have not actually looked at this. So I am also curious, um, is it super easy? The NVIDIA virtual camera, which I'm assuming is what we're looking at here is taking about 600 megabytes of RAM, which is, it's not child chump change, uh, 2.9 CPU, and it's doing 0.5% of my GPU right now. So I'd share that with you, but it'd be a whole rigmarole to set that up in real time. But anyway, so uh, yeah, I mean, you've got this uh, GPU just sitting there, this expensive hundreds of dollar GPU, and you're sitting on a Zoom meeting or a Teams meeting might as well let it do something useful like blur your background. Well, that's it. I hope you uh, enjoyed the look at NVIDIA broadcast. Again, this is free. We'll have a link in the description down below. While you're down there looking at that link, hit that like button, subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notified of other great videos like this one. If you did not like this video, feel free to thumbs down the guy and tell me in the description what I could have done better. I mean, I want these videos to be useful and helpful to you. And if they're not, then I'm happy to change it up and do something different. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, you do have to be on the latest NVIDIA drivers for this to work, and they will helpfully remind you of that if you download NVIDIA Broadcast and you try to install it, it'll tell you if you don't have new enough drivers. So you may have a driver update. This is one of those people that sit there and watch it every day. So that's about it. Other than that, a reminder, you do need an NVIDIA RTX class GPU, which are they're getting cheaper and cheaper by the day. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And I'm Shane Armand Rowe, and we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.